Hello, a very quick video today. We're going to um, try changing the heads in this machine. This was the AG4700 with worn out heads, uh, which you can see is just not giving very good results at all. And I've got some heads from a scrap machine, which I don't know if they're any good. I've just put them under a microscope and cleaned them up. Uh, so I'll pop them on and uh, see if it helps. It's a pretty straightforward job to change them over. So the uh, machine I took the heads from was um, a NVFS 900, which was similar to the 950, but without the time base corrector. So it's the uh, lowest value of the uh, machines in this range, really. But it's the same K mechanism, and it's uh, largely the same inside. They've been stored um, in my outside space for some time so they're a little um, grubby in one patch but I don't think that'll actually matter um, in fact that'll clean off as it's uh, used if the heads are in good order so uh, let's uh, take the earthing off the earthing uh, attachment and then swap the heads over just three screws and obviously need to line it up properly I don't know if you remember in the olden days swapping heads over in in VHS machines when you used to get two head VHS machines if you put the head in back to front you get a black and white picture because there's nothing to prevent that from happening Mr. Dranfield will remember that of course do you have a look at his channel so here come the uh, worn heads as we believe so I just rotated it and it uh, clicked into place we fit the three screws head model is VXP1747 on these machines there was a, a later part number I believe completely different number when I believe they're compatible that looks good header thing be careful with this because if you make a mess of this you could clobber the video heads as you insert it well that's looking ready to try um, it's slightly different isn't it looks like one clogged head and let's go into picture search it's very different I get a reasonably good freeze frame on this one where I couldn't on the other heads oh look it's cleaning up I'll just leave that playing for a while and see if it cleans itself up. It looks a lot better. In fact, it's looking quite tolerable. We'll just leave that running for a while and see how it goes. Actually, that's only been running for a couple of minutes and it's already looking pretty good. But I can hear a very slight sound to it. And if I switch the TBC off, there's a little shimmer. And you know what shimmer means, don't you? Horizontal shimmer. Very often that means that the head speed is changing very, very slightly in each revolution. But of course, with the TBC on, it retimes it. It doesn't matter. What's causing that? Probably that little bit of contamination that's going around, and it's touching the tape and slowing it down. So I think we'll just leave that playing for a few hours, and I think that might uh, polish up the head nicely. Uh, there are other things I could do. I could actually use a little glass paper to... Um, uh, polish up the head but uh, I think I'll just go gentle and just let it play for a while and uh, see if that improves things but it's looking very promising so 
So I've just gently glass papered some of the um, roughness caused by the um, oxidation, the sort of aluminium oxidation there. And now with the TPC off and on, you can't really see much in the way of difference of shimmer. I mean, the worst of it is there, it's almost imperce imperceptible. Whereas there's quite a visible shimmer before. So that's um, cleaned up the head pretty good. And now I'll just leave that playing for some hours and that should uh, polish the head uh, even better. So I'm quite pleased with that, that's come out really well. Right, I've left that playing for some time. I think it's polishing up nicely. If I switch the TBC off, um, well, I can't really see any extra ripple. There's nothing over and above what you'd expect on a normal um, VHS. But switch the TBC on and it tightens it up a tiny bit more. Absolutely perfect. So I'll just show you now what happens. Well, I'm just going to show you fitting the bad drum back in the scrap um, uh, NVHS 900, just so we can see in a little bit more detail that uh, fitting. I also need to reassemble this. So here we have the, okay, in this case, scrap heads, but uh, the principle is the same. So this part here is the um, rotary transformer. So perhaps what you can't quite see because the angles. We're looking down on, this has a set of coils built into it. And there's a set of matching coils built on the inside of this. So these uh, transformers line up with each other so that uh, it's a way of getting the signals from the heads to the machine without using any physical contacts. Some machines do use physical contacts, but not very many. Most use some sort of transformer arrangement like this. Another way of doing it is to mount a head amplifier on the top of the spinning head, which a few professional machines do. So we simply need to put this in there and there are no contacts to make. But there is an alignment. There's, there's these three holes here for the three screws but there's also an alignment pin or spigot here on the plastic and that will line up with one of these holes and I suspect is that one. Right, it's dropped into place. So I'll put it out of alignment and the head sits a bit high, you can't quite see, but when you rotate it and it lines up, plonk, nice. So now we just have to fit the three screws, which go one, two, three, I believe. And I never do them up tight until they're all in place. Now we can fit the um, head earthing assembly back. This screw here lines up with the hole in the chassis there. But to risk hitting the heads on the way down, I tend to push it against the head amplifier. We finish, should finish up with this uh, spring-loaded earthing contact in the middle of the uh, head drum. If that isn't making good contact, you can get white flashes that look a little bit like dropouts, but keep happening. And if you hit pause, you'll see them working their way through the screen. And that's because there's a static buildup um, with the spinning head. It doesn't have anywhere to earth itself. Uh, and so it discharges, um, probably generates a small spark somewhere. So uh, that's why this is, this is uh, extremely important on pretty much all video recorders. So this is the scrap machine, this can go back in my storeroom and we'll go back to testing the AG4700. Right, it's back on test. A quick demonstration of picture search, I think this is important. You should have very thin lines like this, which shows that the heads are working properly. And also, of course, you should check that uh, your hi-fi stereo lights are on there. Well, I hope you've uh, learned something from this, changing heads on this Super VHS video recorder, and it's all worked out brilliantly. Something that uh, has been asked of me is, why do I use this old TV? And the answer for that 
is that modern LCD monitors can uh, cover up noise. They can sometimes act a little bit too intelligently and what you need to see is what's actually there. So I use the CRT, uh, this is a 50 hertz CRT, it doesn't have 100 hertz or anything that will alter what's actually coming out of the machine under test. Uh, anyhow, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.